I remember one time I actually, it was a long time ago, I remember in 8th grade I wore, I made, my mom made me a, like, Danny Phantom shirt for, um, as, like, a costume to wear at school for Superhero Day. Awesome. Do you know what the sad part awesome. was? Awesome. <sighs> the, oh, jeez. The sad part was, um, the one answer everyone asked me said, why are you being a grandma for Superhero Day? A grandma for Superhero Day. <laughs> It took them a while to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> Both of the white hair. That's yes! It's the, the funniest thing I've heard. <laughs> I, I was so mad. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> Day. That was the funniest. It, was, it made me so mad, though. I was like, are you serious? How they, do you not know? <laughs> they, you're being Granny Phantom. <laughs> when I was when I was a girl, things were a lot different back then. I used to get, catch all the ghosts in my day. I was half ghost. Carried a thermos around, be, you know, one of those those one of those little things you used to keep in your lunchbox. I used to be a Ghostbuster way back in the day. That was in the 80s, though. This 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 was like uh, from 2004 to 2007. Now it's now it's 2015, and nobody knows what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, wow. okay. It's like this podcast will be brought to you by Granny Phantom. So welcome to He's a Phantom Podcast, a new podcast that's all about Danny Phantom. Uh, this is a brainchild between me and Devin, because we're both fans of Danny Phantom. And I, I, have, sure? to, I have to thank Devin for all this, because without her, this wouldn't be possible. No problem. <laughs> thank you, Devin. <laughs> Not a problem. So, so Devin brought along a couple of fellows with us for this podcast. We've got Wade Phillips. Dan Dan Chesapoor! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And the newbie. Yes. Same. So there's three Danny Phantom fans and one newbie, which I figure would be a nice little mix-up because... Not a lot of people saw Danny Phantom, and I figure having a newbie on will kind of get a fresh perspective on the show. Uh, so, we're talking about the pilot episode of Danny Phantom, also known as Mystery Meat. Uh, first off, let's talk about our first impressions of the episode. What are the first impressions of the episode? Um, can I go first, guys? Yes, go you, ahead. you may, since you're the newbie. Yes. Oh my god. Where to begin? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm I'm thinking You're blanking right now. You're, you're just, just like you're just like you must really like it. He's lost for words, he was just so blown away. Just blown away by the violet. <laughs> it is so well I'm I'm hooked. I um, what I what I really liked liked about it was just how rapid fire the animation was, how how crazy and energetic it is. And guys, once you get to know me, you'll real you you'll learn that I love the crazy and the energetic. I, oh, oh man, I, actually. Um, it heavily, the first episode heavily reminded me of the movie, if any of you have seen it, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I've, I've heard, heard of it, I haven't seen it, though. I've I seen it. About, I know what you're talking about. It, based on a, was that, wasn't that, was it based on a comic? Yeah, a yeah, graphic it was. novel. Graphic and novel. I am obsessed novel. with the movie. I am obsessed, and Danny Phantom is quite similar. It has this really rapid-fire animation I and I 
I just love the cre um all the creative designs of like the cafeteria lady, the fight sequences. It's yeah. Okay, I do actually have to agree with that. Like, I remember the first time I watched it, I was, like, I was just excited because it seemed like a new idea, and I was already familiar with, like, Butch Hartman's work with, like, Fairly Odd Parents, and I loved that show before I got into this. But then I went, oh, I thought it was Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> I like the whole, like, creative idea. It's about a ghost kid. And when I got into the first episode, I was like, wait a minute, this is actually interesting. And I liked the, probably the first thing I really noticed was I love the leads. I love the characters, first and foremost, for me. I'm a character person. I me love too. And same here. Character, character I'm really into, Sam. Yeah! How, how could you not like Sam? How could anybody not like Sam? <laughs> because, guys, guys, just one, one thing you'll know, I am obsessed and I mean obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with unique and eccentric characters. Yes. As, as, a, as am I. As I, you know. I, Aha! I, I, guys, I got a great idea. For the podcast, we can all be those crazy eccentric characters. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like yes. a plan. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, so I... Cool. <laughs> Chewy, oh, stop. Chewy! Chewy, you're not in this podcast. Get out of here. Don't worry, guys. I no choose my roommate. Allowed. Back to Kajik. He's... Sorry, <laughs> Chewie will interrupt once in a while. That's just a heads up. He's my roommate. I'll be seeing. We'll be seeing you in December, though, in episode seven. There you go. You Chewie. <laughs> Stay out of here. Get out of here. Sheesh. We might need him in season three. <laughs> do 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 right. do. Yeah. So um. God, we'll get into characters a little bit, but yeah, but with I was fourteen when this came out, actually the same age as Danny in the show, so I was I connected to the show more likely because I was the same age as the kids, so I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, you know, half ghost, half kid, that's pretty cool, you know, it's something different, like I've never seen before, and Butch Hartman, I was a fan of his work, you know, Fairly Odd Parents and all this stuff, I know, yeah, cartoons and all that stuff, so. But the thing that really catched me with the pilot episode was the theme song. The theme yes. song. <laughs> I swear, it's the most clever theme song ever. It summarizes everything you need to know about Danny Phantom without watching an episode. It's basically the prologue to the pilot episode. You don't, you, I mean, it, it, the theme song is an episode in itself when you think about it. Exactly. It's and, like, um, yeah. It's, you know exactly what you're getting into the moment you start watching. And you're absolutely right, guys. And um, a lot of theme songs, there, there are so many great theme songs out there. And one I could never get out of my head is the theme song from Arthur. Oh, oh kind of, the, yes! the, kind of, exactly. The exactly. Yes. I swear to God, that's Bob Marley singing that. Actually, it's Ziggy wrong. Marley. Bob Marley's <laughs> song. Marley. But. Anyway, um, another excellent example of, of a theme song that just sucks you in is the opening song to Freakazoid. It's uh, this cartoon from the mid '90s, mm -hmm. released around the same time as Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, slightly after Tiny Toons. And I think it, it was tells... pretty. Uh, I think it was pretty uh, small when those came around, so I don't yeah. quite remember those. But that was more. That was actually more in Doug's era. Yeah. yeah, I didn't watch those shows either because I I was too young. So right, but I was ninety one. I was born in ninety three. So. I um I'm born in ninety four. Oh I'm my god, oldest. I'm the oldest in this group. I was born eighty nine. Ah! Oh my god. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not the youngest in this podcast. Yes. Holy crap! <laughs> so it's Mike, me, Devin, and Zane then. Thank you. Exactly I'm in that really order. Young. Person. <laughs> Why am I the youngest on the podcast? <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, I was about 13 years old, I would say, when uh, 
I saw the when, first episode of Danny Phantom. It was in the spring of 2004. I actually, on the internet, remember, and this was before the uh, the pilot episode even aired. I think this was a year before, you know, it was even advertised on Nickelodeon. I forget what site this was on because obviously it was so, so long ago. It was like 12 years ago, actually, or yeah. so. But I remember they were advertising at the time, like, upcoming uh, uh, shows animated in live action. Like, at the time, they were also promoting uh, My Life as a Teenage Robot as well, and Mm -hmm. some other ones in there. And they actually showed just... It was just the image of... Now, I don't know if it was a preliminary image at the time, or it it could have very well been. But I remember just seeing... It was just a single image of of this character flying Danny Phantom with, like, this, and he had in the hair was basically, like, blowing in the wind. And I just thought that was a really neat image. And it was so opposite from uh, Butch Hartman's uh, previous work uh, The Fairly Odd Parents which I gotta be honest I was never a huge fan of The Fairly Odd Parents I like I was, it but it's fine I, it's fine guys yeah it's okay I, I growing up I always for some reason thought they thought they were kind of dumb and then, and then um, well when Danny Phantom came along I was like this is so. This was the exact opposite. I mean, I was like you, like you said. Now I, now I didn't watch like episode from episode from episode from episode from episode like in order of release. But I saw an, uh, quite a few of them back in the day that uh, I pretty much got to know the characters, know the environment, you know, know a lot of the villains, and it was just really cool. And the animation uh, was glorious just like a lot of shows from back in that era, the fast-paced uh, animation, Absolutely. and the color schemes as well, the color pilot, all the dark blacks and the purples and the greens. And, you know, and then there, absolutely- was a, there was another show that came out, um, I think, two years later after Danny Phantom premiered on Discovery Kids that kind of had that same color scheme as well called uh, Growing Up Creepy. I don't know I've if any uh, of you one. guys remember that. No, no, but... No, but I never I heard do- of that one. But but of course I um but uh, on Discovery Kids I um I do remember a few shows. Um, All right. And well, was, oh crap! I can't remember what I was just thinking of. Uh, <laughs> I hate when those happen. I hate that. Oh, now I remember. Well, considering my like, I don't remember. Like, I remember when Danny Phantom came out. I remember the first thing I saw was the trailer for it. Like, you know, those um, promotional trailers on on TV. And I was excited. I was like, this looks like an awesome show. So I was very excited. And I remember I was at a friend's house and I said, we have to turn this on. (laughs) Turn it on now, damn it. I made her watch it. What I actually remember, I just thought of something in my head. Um, from back then, didn't they actually promote when they promoted the show? Didn't didn't wasn't uh, one of the side promotions Nickelodeon's first superhero? I think so. I think Something it was so. actually. It was. Uh, now I that think, I think about it, yes, thinking it about it, because there's nothing like that before. Yeah. Yeah. It's like no, a- this was, or yeah. Was um, true. I, I yeah, don't but- mean to break any hearts, but as a child, I didn't watch too much Nickelodeon. I. I, um, I was more, um, into PBS. Oh my god, so I was into PBS Well, too. I was, I liked PBS a lot, and I also liked, uh, Nickelodeon as well a lot. Yeah. I was there... very much into Nickelodeon and Disney Channel a little Disney bit more. Disney Channel a little bit too. I think it was more my sister, though, who was big on Disney Channel. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, PBS was one. I actually, for, it's between the period of, like, Danny Phantom... I remember the one PBS show that, even though it's really dumb, I really liked it, um, Word Girl. Do you guys know that? Oh, yeah. I remember that. One... I, saw, <laughs> I only saw a couple episodes. I see a couple episodes of that, too. I but... only see a couple, too, a couple, too. I think my sister used to watch that. <laughs> I also, growing up, used to be a bit a big, aside of, like, PBS and Nickelodeon and, and some of the kids' shows when I was growing up, um, I was also... Uh, unlike most uh, 
unlike most uh, kids at the time, I was a big Turner Classic Movies guy and AMC Dude, American same Movies here. guy. <laughs> same here. Um, Kindred Spirits. <laughs> I, I was not into that, so... I was, a, I was an animated girl. Come on. <laughs> well, animation it is cool. It's, it's, it's an art form. More it than is. it's a genre, I think, but it's become a genre. Right. Everyone thinks it's a genre, which annoys me. <laughs> it's really exactly. an art form because mm-hmm. any kind of genre, whether it be science fiction, whether it be horror, whether it be a western, whether it be drama, comedy, and epic, any of those fantasy, any of those genres could be put in animation. It's just like absolutely hand-drawn animation, claymation, computer animation, and live you- action, using puppets. Well, sure, um, not, you know. with the animation. Instead of saying it's a genre, it's more like a very broad field. It's like an academic field. There's so many subfields. Oh, yeah. Well, it all, well, actually, when you think about it, animation goes back... I mean, it's not just, uh, like, on paper or on the computer. It actually, it actually you think about it, go, could go back to, like, maybe uh, hieroglyphics, if you think about it. <laughs> Which is, well, not really, maybe I'm stretching it when I say hieroglyphics, but you it goes tra- back yeah, a little to bit. the point it's where... Kind of a stretch. Uh-huh. Kind of a stretch, it is but... a little bit of a stretch. What, um, what I mean is, it goes back to, like, just mo- like moving images in general. Not that they're all moving at the same time, but it's also, like, those old things... I forget what they're called, but they were, like, from... Now, this obviously goes ahead a little bit further in history, the... Um, uh, maybe like the early 1900s, those things where people like they spin it around and it looks like a horse is running or a guy on a bicycle or something like that. Oh, I don't know what that's called. Well, you, if you remember, like in the anim- in the Disney version of Tarzan, there's a scene where he's looking through oh, that, yeah. that that thing yeah. with the yes, bike. Yes, that's yes, what yes, I'm talking I'm about. That was like one of the early forms of animation. There, it's it was, like it's more of a picture feel kind of thing. Right. Like, same way that film that was basically that was basically like almost like the the predecessor to the motion motion picture camera right true and, and um animation it started out with works like gertie the dinosaur uh felix the cat mm-hmm. oh yeah going way back but oh yeah but he's yeah, that's true. It just stretched through periods of time. Disney, yeah. Warner Brothers, and all these, it all just... these companies, and Absolutely. now Nickelodeon and all that. Jazz. DreamWorks, Pixar, Blue Sky. Speaking of animation, how is the animation compared to Family Odd Parents? Like, how is it for Danny Much Phantom? Better. Um, I have to agree. Much better because when you think about it. The animation for Fairly Odd Parents is kind of simple, because like the, the, the Fairly Odd Parents was like a premise of Timmy wants something, like he wishes for something and something goes wrong, usually, and um, and he has to find a way to fix it. And yeah, the characters are nice, and yeah, it's kind of it's just kind of simple. But what yep. I like about it is the first Chewy, episode, stop it! <laughs> God damn it, Chewy! When you think about it, was more it almost felt like candy. Yeah, yeah think, that's. I think because it's a superhero kind of show, it relies more on the animation in order for you to get invested in the battles and the. Um, Absolutely. It's and, more. It's more action intense when you think about it. And right. I love action-oriented animation because that gives you an. Adv- um, you can control everything: the speed, the movement, the timing. It's, and and what I loved is how. The animation is just so over the top and and crazy. It's I'm sure with the think... character designs. Oh yeah. yeah, the character designs are great. Like, um, like Sam is my favorite character. I love her. Yes! Because she, I love her because she has violet eyes, black hair, wears a black shirt with a purple oval, and a black skirt with green design on it, and then she wears the purple socks and the black boots. Um, She's awesome. Just so you know. Yeah. And I hope, um, but this is, um, an easy trigger for me to go all crazy and geek out. I have a strong obsession with Tim Burton movies. Oh, Tim Burton. Right. (laughs) So, Sam reminds me of some 
one of Tim Burton's characters, so that's why I, I love. Oh, yeah. I, I can understand that actually, because she's dark and has an interesting um, personality. Um, but I w okay, I have to. There's one thing I noticed rewatching the first episode again. Wait, did you ever notice that during the first episode where Sam's oval in a couple of scenes is green and not purple? I actually didn't notice that. You never knew that? Oh my god, <laughs> rewatch the episode again, especially during the lock, the hallway scene where Danny transforms back into himself on accident and Sam's oval is showing. It's green. It's an it's animation. It's probably an animation thing. goof, maybe. Yeah, it's an probably. animation goof and that I noticed. <laughs> As you probably know, I'm sure you all know this, but goofs are extremely common in animation, especially in 80s cartoons and cartoons from the 1970s, especially in limited animation. Oh, yeah. Oh, in limited, because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and the reason why, and, um, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind it's, of at a it's loss. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I just noticed that watching the episode again, and I remembered this watching it the first time, too. I was like, that's a weird goof. And it was really funny. And I remember a long time ago, somebody made a video devoted to the Danny Phantom animation goofs. And I just laughed. That was, like, one of the most obvious that most people noticed. But I, for me, I didn't notice, I didn't notice it the very first time. I noticed it after I watched it again. So, yeah, if you keep an eye out for that, it's hilarious. There's, like, a couple of scenes where her oval is green and not purple. One thing I noticed, too, um, is at some moments, and this is very rare, like, mo like for the majority of the show, um, most of the characters, except for Danny, um, Jazz, uh, and some of the other characters later on, yeah. have mm -hmm. pupils in their eyes. Danny and Tuck, I mean, not Danny, Sam and Tucker and some of the others don't, but I noticed that at times... With Sam, some t like just certain little moments, she'll have pupils, and then other moments, she'll just have just a clear purple. Yeah. Okay, I can see where you're coming from there. Actually, yeah. I think that'll be more evident later on in the show. Yeah. It's um, just the beginning. Um... Just the beginning episode, though. I that's the only animation goof I noticed from the first episode. So that that's not bad for a first episode and one animation goof. That that's great. So. At least for me, I I'm I'm more forgiving. So, <laughs> so same yeah. here, really. I'm a pretty forgiving guy when it comes to when it comes to like like the basic things that that a lot of a lot of critics in general seem to nitpick about. Yeah, that's true. That's a nitpick, but it's not really a bad. It's like it's, it's exactly. most people three quarters of the time are not paying attention to that. They're paying attention to the characters and right. the motivations and everything. So. I, I don't see this problem. Is is there anything else we should discuss? Like, besides the characters, we have to talk about why, what character, what we like about the characters. I was just gonna say, let's get into the characters, because there's quite a few characters that get thrown at us in the pilot, so... Yes, um, I can actually, um, for me personally, I can strongly identify with Danny's character, because I... Well, I what in high school and middle school, I wasn't really the average kid, but I was always very eccentric. I would sit alone at lunch. I was in special ed math classes, and I was really socially awkward, and I was heavily bullied. Yeah, I can okay. Yeah, I, can see what well, that's I was in, from. I was in some special ed classes too, um, due to um my uh, Asperger syndrome, but I, I knew pretty much everybody uh, on the, in, in the school though. I mean, the, I mean, I was pretty much friends with everybody when I was growing up. I didn't go into, how should I say this? I didn't fit into one particular stereotype or social group. I was pretty much everybody in that breakfast club. I was friends with everybody. As long as you're nice to me, that's all. And that's how I am to this day. And, and people remember me you know, because of that. That's, and obviously because great. of my, my artwork as well. You can be friends with any... Well, look at... Well, Danny Phantom, here's an example. Um, you have... Uh, you have three characters on here who are best friends. You have Danny. Uh, he's pretty much basically the everyman, I'll call him. Because he, he didn't really fit into a quote-unquote 
Click. Uh, social Click. group either or whatever. He's just, you know, like I said, uh, the everyman. Sam is obvi- obviously very artsy, the stereotypic, not really stereotypical, because they do give her a personality. She's not just a cardboard cutout. She's very good uh, nature. Uh, um, if, if I was, su- um, oh man, uh, if I were to hang out with a group of fictional characters, Sam would definitely be a part of my group. I, oh yeah, sorry. I don't believe you. I don't blame you because no, um, yeah, and then what? you have Tucker too, who's the uh, I guess they called him the techno geek basically. But these there's yep. these three different mm-hmm. people from three different uh, social stereotypes, and they're best friends. Exactly. They love each other. Exactly. They. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that make made the show so great is how how these three they they have each other's back all the time. They would die for each other. In a sense, that's technically true, because um, that's actually something I really loved as well. I love how all three of these characters, they've been best friends for a while, and even with Danny's powers, they're all fully invested in it, and they're excited about it, at least with um, Sam and Tucker. And I know Danny at first was not a fan of these powers, which he'll grow eventually. Well, they were strange but... to him, well, so you can right. understand. Yeah, and he just had them, so I don't really blame him for that. But, and, um... um... That actually, in a lot of superhero works, the heroes struggle to adjust to their powers. Oh, that's and, true. Mm-hmm. And for the sake of an analogy, some people see power. And I, one question that I've always had on my mind is, um, how can we use our? If 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 I was given superpowers, how could I use them constructively? Almost like it's anger. And channeling and learning how to channel it productive, productively. See, I think that's the thing, though, because if with a superhero, you're going into this character's desires, motivations, and you're learning about this character. So if the character is perfect all the time, well, that's no fun. I mean, you're Absolutely. not going to enjoy being around mm-hmm. these characters. That's why I like flawed. characters with flaws because they're all, I mean they all have a little bit of flaws, but they're all you know they're human. They're human, exactly. Yep. So and and these and they're these humans that have superpowers and yeah they do for the most part want to be good, but they have their moments where they go, I'm messing up and I know I'm messing up. So and I like that. I like shows that can do this. And I know um, Danny at first is definitely one of those characters where he eventually does grow. But for this episode, he's just the guy who's just adjusting to having his new powers. Because I remember, I think in the show, he's only had them for a couple of months. They mentioned yeah, that I think, in the pilot episode. I th- yeah. yeah, I think they mentioned yeah. that in the pilot, actually. No, I don't, I, they never, I don't remember them ever giving a, t- a time frame. The pilot episode starts off They, where... they just say that a couple of the hallway. Because after the theme song, they cut to the school, and he's right. like, I had these for a, a, a couple, couple of months or so. Yeah, it was only a couple of months. And... Yeah, like a few months, he said. It was like... Yeah, it was I mean, like, it's it's in the dialogue, but it's not like a certain date or time. But... No, it and wasn't Sam given a starts talking about her, her issues and stuff, and, and he's, <laughs> and he's like, Sam, Sam we're talking about me. <gasps> exactly. I remember that, yeah, because I remember, um, yeah, that during that dialogue, it's Sam, and I remember, yeah, Danny said it was only a few months, and then I remember the one line that I really love when Sam um, says, why can't my parents accept me for who I am? It's like, oh, Sam, yes. I'm talking about my problem, my powers, yeah. my problems. Oh, yeah. right. Me right. <laughs> she went into her own zone there for a while. <laughs> funny. Which is, which, is, which is, like you said about, about, about the whole comic aspect, it, it's great, it's great um, because, uh, with the, um, with the character development. It's also great for, um, for the uh, comic relief as well, because you know, even though I I wouldn't say this is a comedy show, it's more I would say a supernatural drama slash animation. There's a lot of comedy in here though too, which is oh yeah, you, oh, yeah. you need you have to have so comedy to balance it out. Absolutely, and um, I call this um, what uh, on this podcast one one phrase you'll often hear me use is what I call the Disney principle. Which means you need to have a clear balance between the comedy and the drama, and happy and and, and cynical, and yeah. and um, the problem with and 
if you go back to a lot of Disney movies, Beauty and the Beast is a perfect example. It can be extremely depressing and extremely diabolical and extremely gruesome. Probably but for it, smaller children, especially. especially. Oh, I'm yeah. sure there are smaller children out there um, that even younger than me, younger than me, like when the beast first comes up in the screen and he's in shadows yeah. and stuff, I'm sure that could scare it's them. Horrifying. Kind of it small is, children. It is True. Terrifying. And, and he's like, "Who are you? What are you doing here?" You know, I'm sure that yes. that scene could terrify smaller children. To oh see yes. The beast. It, it, and right. also, uh, um, a character like, and the the and and Disney and Danny Phantom, what they both are good at is you need both of those tones. Because oh, yeah. if yeah. you're too idealistic, you can't be too happy. No, the, uh, on the extreme end of the happiness and idealist spectrum, you have Barney and the Care Bears. <laughs> right. I right. love you. you <laughs> love me. Oh, man. You guys are awesome. I can't... I can't believe he's still. So, I liked him when I was real, like maybe three or so. Mm -hmm. exactly. Oh my god, that was the best. <laughs> like maybe elementary school onward, I pretty much just say, well, who is this reptile and why is he still around? Exactly. And um, on the other extreme end of the spectrum, you have something like the new Batman movies or. Um, mm, Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, and oh, oh yeah, and and um those works have well works like Breaking Bad have moments of comedy, but it's not really an idealistic kind of comedy. It's a really mm -hmm. right. dark, sick sense. Right. Of humor. Oh yeah. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. And and I love I love and and the truth is. I love both extremely idealistic and cynical works. True. And and um and um the the way the Disney principle, um it um and and also a mi mistake I often see is how um there there are some works that um try to combine comedy and drama together, but it doesn't work. Right. Examples yeah. mm -hmm. include the Star Wars prequels, the Transformers movies. Those, and and the problem with those works is that they're not very, really sure what they want to be. And look, I'm all for combining multiple genres, and that's what I love like about Danny Phantom so far. It's a combination of the supernatural and comedic. Yeah, I. What was, oh, the funny thing is, I remember just, this was just an extra tidbit, I remember reading um, Butch Hartman's interview, and he was inspired immensely from the Ghostbusters in order I to go see for that. his oh, awesome. No, you could, you could obviously see that in I the figured, show. I didn't know this until I watched the Ghostbusters, but um, I, I thought that was... I've never seen the Ghostbusters movies. What? I have. I saw the first one. <laughs> I know who they are. Shut I, up. I, I, I guess I have to put those on my list. I saw this as like a combination of Spider-Man and Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I kind of saw it too. I see this as a combination of both. Well, it's it's like an animated combination of both superheroes, high school drama, and also maybe an episode of a haunting kind of, just a little bit toned <laughs> down. And for yeah. uh, for. A, for uh, maybe for like maybe uh, under the age of of uh, ten that are that might that were watching it, I don't know no if it's real small children were watching Danny Phantom at the time, probably not. I don't know, but what what I'm what but I'm what I'm saying is it takes supernatural elements and also and themes and also uh, what am I looking for like. Um, Different terms, I guess, for the supernatural that they that you know you hear in a lot of paranormal stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a mixture of all of that. Yep. And I've always had an obsession with the paranormal um, and mm -hmm. the eccentric, and um, I, I and I've always loved works that fuse multiple genres together. 
Yes. Um, yes. What was... You know, okay. Uh, this is, just reminds me, since we were talking a little bit about characters. Am I the only one that sees Tucker as the comic relief of the three? He's that, the I comic th relief. I think he is, he's actually. He's he is. the true he, comic relief of the he's show. He's the comic relief of because the Because when you, of the you three. had moments where Danny and Phantom... Are, I mean, Danny and Sam are in their serious <laughs> mode, and then Tucker is still in his obviously comic relief mode and then the two get mad at him for it and they're like yeah. you know Tucker. Tucker exactly exactly Tucker. and what I like about Tucker, he doesn't get it <laughs> Tucker is not unbearably obnoxious no and no he, he, there's a lot of obnoxious characters out there and Tucker isn't one of them I no he's not I like Tucker just because even though he's a techno geek he really seems to care about his friends even though he screws up and, Absolutely, uh, and, and and my and, favorite part of the episode, at least in this episode, was when Tucker's trying to get Sam out of the meat pile and he's gonna grab the fork <laughs> and knife. And he's he's just to... eating out of it. Yes, I she's remember that. It's it. it's like <laughs> she's suffocating here. She's suffocating. Hurry up, Tucker! She's trying to eat. <laughs> I'm gonna go and, this ground beef. Where's a taco shell? <laughs> shell. And, we um, taco shells nearby. <laughs> and one thing I see a lot of artists, um, particularly filmmakers and animators, screw up on is the comic relief. Because sometimes the comic relief can be unbearably obnoxious and not funny. And True. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'm obsessed with the eccentric characters. But some eccentric characters can be very annoying so not only that i mean i don't mind if they're if, if a character might be a little bit zany or annoying i think the biggest thing for me is like now i'm just going to use a, 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 a comical character which i know a lot of people like but i hate it for some reason and i think i know Shoot. Uh, uh, clark griswold i could not stand clark griswold from the vacation films just, just to get, I always found uh, him very mean spirited, like, like, like Peter Griffin, kind of. Yes, he, he, I can't stand him, a Family Guy. Either. Me neither. Oh my god. I have watched American Dad, and I can sort of handle American Dad, but Family Guy, I cannot. Get, I've tried Family Guy, but I'm like, screw this. And the problem <laughs> with, and the problem with the, and, and there's no character development. There's no story structure. It's. Just it's just like maybe I don't know how long the, the Family Guy episodes are, but it's just like an hour or so of just stupidity. And hey, I have nothing. I, I I'm actually kind of a sucker for stupid humor. Well, yeah, if it's yeah, done right. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah if it's done right. Like uh, um, depends on the show. For instance, it exactly. uh, depends on the stupid humor. Uh, Beavis and Butthead is a major guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah. Oh, I hate you that even, And you can even kind of argue, you know how I said earlier on in the podcast that I love the Stooges? Somebody could even argue that, yeah, they in their time, they maybe they were kind of a little stupid, they, but they were funny still. Sure. Absolutely. Right. The they, were, they weren't mean-spirited. They weren't and, real horrible and, and, to each other or foul or crass. Absolutely. And that's... And, and well, I that's Seth that... MacFarlane for you, first of all. I mean, that's pretty much all the guy knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, but... Um, so we talked about the three majority characters, but let's talk about Danny's family. Oh, of Jazz, yes, Maddie, have... and Jack. Okay, Fenton. okay I have ghosts? to say... <laughs> where are the ghosts? Did you ghosts. say ghosts? <laughs> Jack, <laughs> where are the ghosts? Like, they're building the, um, my favorite... I love, of the two parents, my favorite has to be Maddie. I love the mother. Maddie Fenton, the mother. I love her mm -hmm. just because she's also independent, but she clearly loves her husband. You can tell. Yep. Oh, yeah. Even absolutely. though he's an idiot, he's an absolute idiot sometimes. She clearly loves him. And if she's I just love... obs as obsessed as go with ghosts as he is, probably not as much. Yeah, I think she's yeah. a clear minded one of the two. De mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. Jack is more of the idiot of the two. Like, I remember the. Jack's, Jack's voice acting is hilarious. It oh, is, and we'll get, we'll get into voice acting a little bit, oh, but yeah. It's actually kind of neat, too, like, like, he has the dark hair like Danny, but they give him white streak, streaks across. 
Oh my yeah. god. Besides, you know, my... like, like he's maybe in his maybe like late 40s, early 50s, somewhere around. Right. I'm just I'm guessing. guessing around there. Um, Probably. My favorite part. Oh, I should say my my favorite part of that episode was when like Jack is trying to see if Jazz is a ghost because <laughs> he thinks that Jazz is a ghost, and I just burst out burst out laughing when he tried to grab her, and um he's like, how come she's not trying to phase out of the net? <laughs> Because I'm not a ghost! I'm not a ghost! <laughs> so, well, I will admit the one character I didn't like at first, but it was Jazz. I thought she was a little overbearing at first. Just well, even in this episode, she's not quite as developed yet. We barely know anything about her. She's, she's nope. sort of in the side at this point. Yeah, she's yep. very much a side character right now. But this is at first, because, yeah, right. in this episode, she's clearly just the... Um, teenager who is trying to be an adult, the the adult of the family. The bratty. Yeah. She's interested in psychology, and I was she... just gonna say she seems to be very overly intelligent for her age at this point. Yeah. Like, it's very much, you know. She's very much an intelligent, um, very oh, intelligent, yeah. but also kind of overbearing sister of the group. At right. least and she comes off as very grumpy at first. Oh, she's very grumpy. Not very, first. just a little bit. Just a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah. She's not obnoxious. She's not, like, whining all the time. She's just trying to, to deal with her family, yeah. Right. She's just trying to deal with that, that her family are ghost hunters. And Danny is still trying to figure out his powers, but he hasn't revealed them yet, or revealed no. them at all. So, and she has no idea. But, no. um... She's oblivious she's to try- this. She's oblivious. Right? Everybody's oblivious right now. The only people Except that know... Except for Sam and Tucker. Except, yeah, yep. Sam, Sam and Tucker, and Tucker know. are the only ones that, um, know. So I really thought she was okay at first, but I really do love the parents. Oh, hilarious. Oh, they're hilarious. They're character... also comic relief when you think about it. Yes. Oh, yeah, are you they're kidding me? Char- really especially Jack. Characters. They're, they're kind of uh, warm, fun comic, re- uh, comic, comic relief. One character that I love so far, the principal... Mr. Lancer. Mr. Lancer. <laughs> Mr. Yep. Mr. Lancer. Yep. God, that he's... animation, that... And... The monotone voice. Pick up that turf witch. With Pick my up with my hands. hands. <laughs> and... The character... One character I can't stand. Chad. Dash. Dash. Oh, Dash. Uh, bully. I don't like the, the high, the high school jock. To. He's the jerk. He's yeah, the he's jerk. the jerk. Like, oh, God. You don't know the character I will hate in the next steps. Who do you I know hate, exactly Devin? I who you're talking about, but I'm not going to say it. I don't want to nope. spoil it for nope. Zane. Nope. But I know exactly who you're talking about, Devin, and we'll talk about it the next time. We can talk about it on an independent uh, yep. on Facebook. But I know exactly oh, who you're talking And she's a very important character, too. Yep. Um. Mm-hmm. She'll be a part of the, about uh... the next time, but um. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, for um... now, like Dash is just the jerk. He's really that's all he is. He's just the jerk, and um. He, um, Dash is kind of like the Gaston and the he Flash is. Thompson. Well, well yeah. he's like he's yeah. like the uh, pretty boy. I'm gonna use this term. He's basically now he's he's not, he's he's a he's a stereotype of the uh the, uh, the pretty boy jock, the guy who thinks. Yep. Oh, I'm God, like Gaston. I'm God's gift to women. Look at my pecs. Lo- you know. And I love characters like Gaston. I'm just gonna h- end up hurting you, I... or hurting you eventually. Eventually, you know. Oh. But, but I'm, 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 I, you know, I got the nice smiles and stuff, you know. And... But I'm, you know, all well, I see, care yeah, about I is love me. Characters like that. I, I. And of course, makes... of course, somebody like that's gonna look down on on Danny, Sam, and uh, Tucker because, well. He's obviously oh. very athletic. He's probably, uh, uh, he's, uh, I guess, a football and a basketball star. Yeah, yeah he's, the football he's like a football. He's like a superstar male uh, athlete at, at his I, high school. I bet, I bet those, um, those jock characters would hate people like us. Probably. Oh, look oh, at all oh, the streets. Look at well, these you never know. talking about a children's cartoon. It's the, car- it's the cartoon stereotype, yes. Um... But I think the difference between, like, Gaston and, like, Dash, for example, and Dash is, think about it. Gaston is the three-dimensional 
character. He's the villain of that movie, and he's three-dimensional. Right. But with Dash, he's the stereotype. He's right. the ste- typical stereotype jock who's a football star. He's beloved by everybody except for the leads. And um, You know who else? Uh, else, I just thought of this now um, that um, Dash could remind you of. Different species, though. Steel from Balto. Oh, yeah! Oh, yes! <laughs> What about that now? Guys, oh my it's been, god, I it's never been thought of that years, It's been years since I saw Balto. I, I think it's one of the that. first movies I ever saw in the theater. I was only like four years old at the time, but I was pretty small. But yeah, Steel, he's basically like Gaston, Dash, really popular. Everybody lo- loves him, but he's an ass to everybody else. And, and, and the villains who are popular on the surface, but they're really jerks. I love it, characters like it's that. It's an archetype I, that's come up more than once in both animation and live action movies. And it, it's it's a good one. I'm not one of those kind of guys that, that picks on something because of cliches. As long as they're gr- good cliches. I mean, you can be cliched as all, all you want, I think, as long as they're actually good cliches. Exactly. And this is and, a good um, the, And this heavily reminds me of what Doug Walker has to say on the issue. Right. Um, D- Doug... Doug is all for combining the old ideas with the new, and that's why I love his work so much. And I think that's a major... And if you want to be creative, you have to acknowledge this principle. Nothing is new. Right. But but what you can do is do your own take. And that's what I like about Danny Phantom. It takes ideas we've seen before. Spider-Man, the supernatural... And it combines it. it yes. To, it, tries it puts to it all in a blender and just mixes it. I think Absolutely. that's what I like it too. It's a unique. It's a unique take. It's like, it's going full on. Let's try these ideas. See how it, well they work. We'll it, just throw it, them at the also, wall and see guys, what happens. Um, Cliche ideas can be done very badly. For oh, for yeah. There's probably shows that do this, but. Um, for instance, a cliched idea could be done badly. If nothing new is done with it, nothing oh, unique, right. then you just feel like you're gonna nitpick it. Yeah, I can understand that, and I can kind of I... understand that too. That's why I don't hate Dash as much as I sh- could. I could have hated him much more, but um, for no, the most if there was part... a guy like like now if he was real and he was treating you like this, I'm sure you'd dislike him even even more probably. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I don't see a problem with Dash right now just because he's, yeah, he's the jerk. That's all he really is, but, mm-hmm. but, oh, God, I have to mention, we should talk about, though, Lunch Lady, the villain of this Oh, show. yeah. Of this episode, so, anyway? She has, like, a split personality disorder. Oh, she's, oh, I right. swear to God, she has a split personality disorder, because some moments she's like, hey, would, would you like some cookies? Or and then, ah, you're up, you You know? <laughs> you know? The, guys, guys. You know who she reminds me of? The Queen of Hearts. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, that's a good... Oh my god, that's a Absolutely. good analogy. Cause she, I can just see where that's coming from. Guys! She, her, well, her voice, was she voiced by Ruth Buzzy by any chance? Actually, no. I, no, no, no. Because no. That vo- her voice almost sounds... You know who I'm talking about, though. I believe... I, I actually, think I do. Actually, oh. I found out her voice actress. It's um, Patricia Heaton, which I've never yes. heard. Yeah, okay, I remember that now. And um, we definitely love the lunch lady just because first episode you're going into an episode about meat and veggies, and she's yeah. all about like she's just like we have to have meat in the um in the cafeteria well, lunch. instead because of the that's lunch. What the menu. lunch is today on the ske- she's she's very much a, a schedule oriented entity, and if anybody thre- um threatens that or not well. To her, anybody, it's funny, but if anybody tries to alter that or try to or to try to change it up a little bit, not a, it's beyond unorthodox to her. She'll just go ballistic, mm-hmm. and it's, it becomes, uh, in her mind, probably terrifying for her because it's not it's it's out of order. And uh, about characters like the lunch lady, I love those kind of characters with the extreme mood swings. Oh yes. And she very is much a mood swing. Like, when you first meet her, you really don't know anything about her. She's kind of just coming out of the portal. She's going up. And you don't know exactly what she's doing. But then you see her, like, in the cafeteria. And when Danny's ghost sense goes off. 
and and then you finally meet her and she's like thanks did somebody change the menu and then tucker's like yeah sam did it's like you, you suck <laughs> she just yeah she just she like snaps like just like that <sighs> and and her her eyes get like well right. they're oh, like it's very cool. they're like tiny they're like tiny little pupils but then they become like fire red <laughs> Oh man! Inside and her I hair love, gets all, I like... love animation like that. That 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 can be both very subtle and quiet and over the top and insane. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that with the villains in Danny Phantom. Oh, and there's more of them to come. Yeah. Not to, not I'm to going. Oh yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot to come. Oh yes. Yeah. You'll be. Yeah, this show is all about um, the different villains that Danny encounters. But yeah. as the it's lunch, almost we... when you think about it, I just this is something I thought of. These villains are almost um, these villains are almost like the nickel like the two thousands Nickelodeon version of the classic Batman villains in a way because there's so many of them. Well, oh. here's the thing. I... Um, Here's the thing. I was reading an interview with Butch Hartman, and he claimed that the villains are homage to the '60s Batman villains. And I can get that. Clever. And then there's episodes later on where they, where they, where they're all together too. Not to give oh, yeah. away yet, but. Mm hmm But. And, they, and he tries to, he tries to cast like these celebrity names that voice these ghosts, and it's kind of like homage to the. Cele celebrities who go into the Batman series, so it's kind of like an homage to Batman I in a way. I can definitely see that. Actually, yeah, I, this will definitely be evident later on with the other oh. villains, but um, oh, yes. most, I, I have to say this too about like I love the whole how she can how she can get meat to come to her and it yep. attaches to her and she can make mm -hmm. herself into a giant. Meat. Oh yeah, that's that's, that's really neat. cool too. Shape shifting sort. Of. Well, shape not really shape shifting, but she almost has the same powers as a Magneto, except it's not metal. It's meat. meat. Ground beef. <laughs> Ground beef. <laughs> um, beef. But where's the beef? So is he anyway, the brown, um, ground beef though? <laughs> um, um, since since this show has a wide variety of villains, I think that for a good group of villains. You need to have a wide variety, and that's what makes the Batman villains and the Disney villains so great. There are all kinds of villains. Mm -hmm. Well, say, well, and here you're gonna see you're gonna see that there's all kinds of villains too. I mean, the lunch lady was a great villain. She's yeah, but you haven't she's, seen she's, she's, introduction. No, she's just like the just like the sample course to what you're you, gonna she, experience. Like, saying, if you know, <laughs> like, she, like if she was real, that she'd be da a dangerous villain to come up across. You haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, no, there's the much start. more, like, um, oh, yeah, there's great. much more villains. She's just one of the simple ones, like, she, or not simple, per se, but she's more the introduction. Yeah, like, but he was for, yeah. sample. But for now, those like, villains are response. named Anonymous, 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 and Anonymous. Yeah. I like that the that show is, just doesn't, no spoilers. Like, doesn't, like, um, go straight on, introduce everybody. The show's well, yeah, it's I mean, that, they, they, they threw, they would throw that all at you, and it's just like watching a film, uh, a film series, um, I I would rather watch the first first movie than the second movie than the third fourth fifth sixth like all like not all at once, but but uh, maybe like space them out, and, and yeah, that goes with anything. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because with the problem with binge watching, it can take way too much time. I I agree with you, and it's no, and then it's 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 just everything's over. Then it's no funny. You have nothing to look forward to. Exactly. And, and that's my strategy for watching Breaking Bad one episode a night, and that makes you all the more pumped, all the more mm -hmm. excited. I totally get that. Because then you have mm -hmm. something to look forward to, and even if you yeah. space it out, maybe not even just a night, but maybe maybe a week. Yeah. Oh, you exactly. even want to stretch it out further, you know, to keep up that hype and anticipation for something. Hey, Very hey guys, true. Um, I gotta get going. But it was awesome talking to you. It was awesome contributing to this podcast. And first episode, <laughs> I swear well, this was this was a lot of fun, Zane. It was yeah, a pleasure it was to Zane. meet you, and I hope to see yeah, more for coming on. on here. Oh, thanks, oh, yeah. guys. I know oh. we would all be awesome friends. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that's fine. No, we'll just continue on, and we'll. So I have to get going soon too. But okay. Uh, should yep. I, well, the should hour's I just... almost up, I guess. It's... We'll be almost done in a little bit. 
right? Yeah, we'll wrap it up. But we'll talk a little bit more because I do have other things I want to say. But yeah, well, should I just? Hang, hang, I'm, I mean, I'm available I, whenever. Really. Uh, should I just hang up my part of the chat? Yeah. 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 Yep. Thank exactly. you so much again, guys, and absolutely, Zane. Yep. No problem, Zane. Thank you. See you the next episode. <laughs> On the seventeenth, right? Uh huh. But yes. Yes. What were you saying, Mike? You didn't say a word. <laughs> I know, you guys have a lot of good information coming out of your mouths. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, wow, can't even... See? My two... <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, man, but... Um, okay. We did talk about the characters. I just want to briefly go over the voice acting. Oh, just... yes. Very good voice acting. I There's... looked up who some of these people are, like Grey Delisle, of course, voice Oh, out. yeah, she's done a lot of different voices. She's done, but I like that. She's done multiple majority characters. She's, she's a good voice actress, too. Mm -hmm. oh, nice to listen to. Mm -hmm. the one, actually, um, David Kaufman voices Danny. Um, yeah. I recognized him more from this, but I know he also did the brother on Buzz on, the, the Buzz on Maggie show. Do you remember the Disney Channel show? I, I remember that. I don't know if I ever saw it, though. I actually watched a few episodes. I know what you're talking well, about. I think it's... The thing that caught me the most with uh, David Kaufman is uh, he voiced Marty McFly in the Back to the Future animation, oh. uh, animated series. Oh, I did not so he, he, he's the Michael, that makes... And he also did the Stuart Little series, too. So he's, he was the Michael J. Fox replacement for the voices. That so that's sense. what I kind of... I was like, wait, is that Michael J. Fox? Oh, that when you think so about funny. it, Danny shares a lot. You know, you just said about um, Marty McFly. Danny and, and uh, Danny Phantom and Marty McFly sort of share some of the same personality traits. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, what was the. Um, I think there's others, like, you know, like. Um, oh, my God. I wrote them down, actually. <laughs> That's a great part. <laughs> Rob Paulson a... voiced. Um, you know Rob Paulson, the guy who's voiced many characters who voiced Jack. I've heard that did, voice. Did you know that? I've heard that voice. I just didn't know the name. I, yeah, some, it was weird. There's cause... some voices that I know. Like, I've, I've heard this voice in all different kinds of different exactly. shows, but sometimes I don't know the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I was, when I saw Jack, I was like, wait, this sounds, sounds so familiar. I was like, that's Rob Paulson? What the? What? Because Rob Paulson is like, Man, he did everything from Animaniacs to Turtles. I was like, yeah, whoa! He voiced multiple characters in this show, which... Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll get into that later on in the podcast. Oh, yeah, there's other characters, there's other, other voices, too, that are recognizable later on that we'll get into. Oh, yeah, yeah um, what was the other, um... Uh, there was another one that I wanted to mention that surprised me a bit. What was it? Uh, which... Mr. Lancer. Ron... Mr. Lancer was voiced by Ron Perlman. Yep. I know who Ron Perlman is. Really? That was Ron Yeah, Perlman. that was Ron Perlman. I know exactly I was like... who Ron Perlman is. He ha he's a guy with the big forehead and the big chin. He's like... Yeah, he was he was Hellboy. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that, so... I was like, what? Yeah, he's the... God, I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, Kathy Sosi also voiced um, Maddie. Oh, I didn't yep. know that Kat Sosi did. Ma I know who Kat Sosi is. Did she, she voiced Phil and Lil, didn't she? Yep. She did. She, yep. she did a lot of other. Yep. She also voiced their mom. She did a lot of different voices too. She has that real, um, that real um. Sometimes it's real boyish, or sometimes it's real like this. You know. Oh, I love her. She's she's done. Some I think she that. also did the voice uh of the uh, little. And this is a live action movie, but she did the voice of the of the uh, youngest uh, reindeer in the Santa Claus two and three. Oh, I didn't Ch know. That. Chip or Chet or something like that. You hear it in the oh, background and it sounds like, right. oh my God, this reindeer almost sounds like it was taken over by Phil and Lil. Because <laughs> it's laughing in the background going, yeah, oh yeah. You know, it's like, it's like a mix of Phil and Lil in there. You know, that's going to be the tagline now. You know you've seen Santa Claus 2 and 3 when you've heard Phil and Lil. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That would be hilarious. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So, always, let's just... Cat Susie's done a lot of different... Voice. I think Tara yeah. Strong... Later, later on, Tara Strong's in here, too. She does... Yeah, a she, was, she voiced a couple of characters as well. It's... She plays a really awesome female villain, which we'll get into later. You might know who I'm talking yeah. about. You might not. If those who are watching knows. Oh, we'll you guys probably out. know. 
You fans out there will know. You guys will know. You would be like, you? I know who you're talking about. Yes, you. The voice acting, luckily. That was the, like, the, you don't have to talk about everybody, but um, no. it's it's no. interesting. No. There's a lot they're, of they're, people. Oh, oh I'll yeah. be talking about the voice acting, cause especially with the villains, because there's a lot of celebrity. Here too, later on. Oh, there's v plenty of good um, voice actors in this. There's... And I think Gilbert Gottfried oh, comes later on. Oh, man. Wait, so Gilbert Gottfried? Oh, my God. I'm, I didn't know that. Now I'm the fan. What the is he tech? He's is that Technus? Oh, wait a minute! I'm gonna have to like look it up now because oh my god! No, 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 no! That is um. Wait, that's somebody else. That's Rob Paulson. Really? That's that Rob Paulson. Like Gilbert Godfrey. I, I know it did, but okay. I was like remembering reading that. I was like, that's Rob Paulson I doing that character. I thought another character he voiced Rob Paulson, the box ghost. Oh, was that oh. Rob Paulson? That was Rob so, Paulson. Oh my god! I yeah. just like yeah. Oh my god. Box Ghost will be the oh, uh, yeah, next the episode. Box Ghost! That's, that's in the... Is that... The, he comes in... If his first interview is in the next episode? Yeah, One of a Kind is the next one we're going to talk about, so he's going to be introduced in that episode. Well, I thought it was the next one with parental bombing we were talking about. So. Mind you, we're going by production number order. Oh, okay. Then it is One of a Kind. So it's going to be a little difficult finding the episodes, but yeah, so I think the next episode's going to be One of a Kind, and it will be introduced to the Box Ghost, Pauline. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. Paulina. Okay. Paulina. We'll get into her. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. I know. <laughs> All right, I'll calm down, but you know, I don't like her. Um, okay. Sam's a lot better of a person than a character. Okay, thank you. I will talk about her next time, but, um, who, what else were we going to talk about with this? Other, I, I know, um, I forget who else so I was going to talk about now. What about the episode Mystery Me itself? How... Is that as an episode itself? Like, how's the plot, and how's that go? I think for a like, pilot, it pretty much does its job, really. It does do its, its job of being a, um, it's just pretty much an episode that goes into, this is Danny facing some somebody, and he gets the, um, and he gets the ghost in the end. And it's the introduction to the Fenton Thermos. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, It's not absolutely. one of the, like, most uh, deepest episodes, but it does its job as an introduction, and that's what it was supposed to do. That's exactly it. It's exactly it's an introduction episode. It doesn't try to do anything more or anything less, and that's why I think it works. It introduces the characters yes, right. It, does. it introduces it the well. villain, one of the villains, and it introduces the parents and everybody. And so, I think it works overall. I love it personally, and I remember finding myself laughing at it more now. <laughs> so, so are we for meat or ultra cyclo vegetarianism? Meat, 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 Any day, any hour, meat. It's just hilarious how the healthiest thing in the world, but for you, but I, I love it. I love it how Tucker has like the super sense of meat. Like he can smell any kind of meat. It's like, ooh, medium rare. Hmm. If we had that, that's hilarious. Medium rare, it's like medium rare the filet mignon. Oh my god, I was just laughing so hard. I and think he could name all the parts of the uh, cow basically. If, if yeah. he could, he probably could. He, um, he could. He's a he's a big meat meat fan. You know fanatic. how like oh when god. you go to the, the deli at the grocery store and you see like the di they have like the different parts of the cow and stuff like that and what mm -hmm. they're used for. He could. He didn't need to need to look at that. He could just say, oh, that's the stir stirloin. That's this. That's that. Yes. Oh my god. That's how I love about Tucker. My, okay, I have to say my favorite line about Tucker. It's when Tucker is trying to hug all the meat in the downstairs basement. <laughs> and he says, <laughs> and Danny is like, why is it that I have the ghost powers and you're the weird kid? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's that is actually a, a very good question. <laughs> Tucker's like, like meat hug. <laughs> He's got a fetish for meat. He loves his meat. <laughs> meat fetish? Now we have What's he gonna dress up like Lady Gaga now in the meat suit? Oh my god, that would be a hilarious fan art. Somebody make oh a fan god. art of Tucker in a meat suit. <laughs> he could he would probably go with one of the, be one of those people who go as a ham for Halloween. Uh <laughs> 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 He'd be the cheeseburger in the Nasty Burger. <laughs> the Nasty Burger. What a name for a restaurant. <laughs> oh my god, I can't... As long oh. as the food's good. 
As long as the food oh. As long as the food is good. Ultra recycling vegetarianism. That's a, that's a funky word. It's so funny. Ultra like, recycling. It's vegan. Vegan is closer, but oh, uh, not not eating anything without a face. My favorite part though was when um, it's like I'm eating grass on a bun. It's that's garbage. What it looks like. It's it looks, yeah, it looks it's like weird. Piece of, it looked like a piece of like you just Bread took a knife, cut cut a square piece of the of lawn or ground, and here it is. <laughs> Like you're eating the and, My favorite part was the three mud pies, and they gave me three yeah. mud pies. Mud pies. <laughs> like, and I started, um, and then Danny started garbage fight. <laughs> but it's not garbage. It's not garbage. And it can be recycled. Yes, it's recycled, but God. it tastes like shit. <laughs> See, Sam is Sam is like the um, like, like the righteous. Environmental vegan who's also goth. Well, that's in what a I way. love about her. She's like the very. She's not exactly completely goth, but at the same time, no. she's not completely ultra psycho vegetarian. Maybe got... maybe the more the more the term more for her would be not necessarily goth, but maybe like in between emo. Maybe. I always saw uh, her as the... the goth and hippie. She's like the yeah, somewhere around she's there. Like, she's like a mix. It's, she's a, it's not like a. Goth. It's like an in between. I call her the goth hippie because I swear she. Like if you put her in the seventies and just she would fit right. Well, the well, when you see the two like rival parties at the school, like meat, veggies, and you look at Sam's side, it's all like the, the hippie bus in the background, you know, peace, love, yeah, and I just all that, that stuff. Yeah, I noticed that too. I literally noticed that. It's like what do you want? No, veggies, no, veggies, veggies, forever. veggies, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do we? It's like, like what do you want? Meat. When do we want it? No. no. <laughs> Either you're with me or you're against him. I burst out laughing when I saw that for the first time. I was like, oh my god. Oh, and we've oh all been god. in that situation, too, where, where you know, two of your friends are having a spat and you're caught in the middle. And you're like, if that's exactly what the heart of the episode is. It's really just about Danny's them. Danny's caught in the middle. Yeah. And Danny's caught in the middle and he has to fight the lunch lady. And, and he's uh, it's just, it, But sh to be fair, the lunch lady's on Tucker's side. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, she's she, the only oh, reason yeah. she's pissed off is because Sam it's out of her routine. It's, it's out, out of her yeah. schedule. It's not traditional to change the lunch menu. It's been like that for fifty years. Fifty years. Oh my god. <laughs> I love. Uh, yeah. Overall, it's a good episode. But I, oh. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. What do you want? Meat. Meat. What do we want? It now. No. <laughs> That's the episode. That's gonna be my quote of the day for this. Woohoo! I want meat too. <laughs> yes. We want meat. I do eat salads meat. every now and then. Though. Oh, I eat salads. <laughs> Salad, what potatoes, do you get? and corn in the cob. That's pretty much it. Carrots, maybe. I'm not a big fruit guy at all. I don't really. I'm not a big fruit person. I, that may be a bad thing. Okay, I don't know. fair enough. But, but I, 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 I was never a big fruit person. Sure. Apples and bananas, maybe, but anything else, no. Overall, uh, the pilot episode did really good. It introduced us to all the characters and the premise just like that. Yes. It did and its job well done. I'm very so, pleased. I was very pleased with that one. And yes, I'm thrilled you reminded me what the next episode was because I was literally gonna. I would have not watched the right episode. <laughs> I forgot. About yeah. So next time, next time, mind you, like most networks air episodes out of order sure so like mm -hmm. so like for example the next coming episode episode two is called parental bonding but it's a production number three so it's technically number three okay. the next episode with the production number two is one of a kind and they both aired on the same day too so there's well, a back-to-back -back episode that actually, it was that a would be confusing. yeah, yeah there true. was it was on it was aired on the same day so they kind of flipped it around a bit so Fair enough. Okay, I can see where that's coming from. Um, but yeah, okay. I was just so confused. I was like, oh crap. And I'm the fan. Yeah, you would have watched episode. the wrong episode and you would have been on the podcast like, we're talking about this episode. No, Devin, we're talking about this episode. Ah, crap. <laughs> Good thing I've seen these episodes. Well, so. on YouTube, I'm, re I'm refreshing my mind and rewatching them chronologically. Like, I printed a whole list of the episodes off of Wikipedia. So, like, yeah, I watched that's two, what I'm looking watched, at too. watching two a night on YouTube and I'm crossing stuff off. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I've been using the wiki. I'm, wiki I'm too. still in. They, I'm they still in number. the area of 2004 episodes. 
Oh, that's good. And then, yeah. there's two, and then it's 2005 episodes, 2006, yep. and then last but not least, 2007 episodes. Oh, I, the yes. production, or I will just say this, season three is one of the most confusing seasons to have, right. at least um, if it was airing-wise. It's just so fucked up. Oh, I'm sure. So just, and then there's a lot so... of, like I was saying to you the other night, there's a lot of, of not only just animated shows, but live-action shows that'll do that's that, good. like They'll mm-hmm. air the series finale, but then eh, we'll just throw like maybe two or three episodes that were prior to that after the fact, which is kind of it's stupid. That but happens you know. sometimes, and it's like what? Like I thought that you just you ended on a perfectly good note, or you continue? No, 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 no. These are three episodes that we're going to air beforehand, but they were sort of on the side here at the studio, and uh, just for some reason maybe we got we just lost our heads, we got lazy or something, so. <laughs> Anything, oh. uh, well, it's, it's that's the same way too with like the uh, the uh, last episode, the the series finale of Drake and Josh, which was a, which which was a special, a two part special. But then after the fact, they they threw like two or three. Ep- no, I think it was two episodes after the fact, which took place beforehand. <laughs> and that happens a lot. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. And those studios are like, we want to show this episode before this episode. I don't know why. I well, think it's they just, do when it you're watching a, Like I said before, when you're watching a film series for the first time, or even just any time, why don't you do it in chronological order? Do it in chronological order. Exactly. I mean, now if you're, showing, if you're watching a prequel before hand, that's a little different. And then you're watching an original and then a sequel. But, you know, most of the time I, I'm pretty much... You know, I always, I told, always used to tell my sister that. Because I remember she wanted to show the Harry Potter movies to my grandmother, and she just randomly oh, decided to show Prisoner of Azkaban, which was the third one to her. And I'm like, you got to show her the first one first. And she's like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> well, she's going to get confused. I don't care. I want to watch this. Whatever. Uh, see, this <laughs> is why I, I don't usually watch a lot of um, movies that are sequels. First, I, though I've done this actually a couple of times. One time was Despicable Me too. <laughs> well, that's an exception because I never saw the first one. I only saw the second one. And here's the thing: it, like I said, it usually goes against what I say about first one and the sequels or whatever. But this it was one two used- years ago. It was on Christmas Day. Um, it was over at my mom's uncle's house, and the and their grandchildren wanted to watch Despicable Me too. So. I basically had to watch it. I had no choice. I couldn't be a curmudgeon and say, I didn't watch the first one, so we're not going to watch this. Yeah, I had this also. I had this happen too and, with. And, and as a, from what I understand, as a, as a movie by itself, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty good. It was cute. I, I love the second Despicable Me movie. Um, it was, it, and from what, it was a nice little love story, and the thing, thing was, from what I understood, you didn't even need to see the first movie t- uh, to understand what was going on, because... I mean, this is just what somebody told me that that the two don't really. I mean, except for the fact that they have the same characters and it's the same universe, they don't have a whole lot of stuff connecting. I mean, I could be wrong. Well, okay. Another movie I will say that I went and see in theaters the second one because my nephew begged me to see it was Planes, Fire, and Rescue. He I was never like, saw he was like the youngest five, and he was begging. Two. Me. I only saw the first Cars. I saw. <laughs> I saw, it's getting ridiculous. I saw Cars from 2006. Don't I, see, I, I don't thought it was. See. I, I thought it was a good movie. I have no desire to see see Cars two, because when I because when I saw the trailer for that, I thought it looked like shit, because it was like they took Cars and they added the spies, spies, and yeah. Yeah. And put it in a blender, and it's like. <laughs> There's an example of something. See, here's an example of something. That does not work when you combine more than one genre. There you go. It's full circle. They come in full circle. <laughs> so next so next time we're just gonna talk about one of a kind, because Danny is one of a kind. Indeed he is. Cause he's, and the show is definitely one of a kind. One of a kind. Exactly. Circle. And brought to you by my shirt. <laughs> he's a phantom. Got it. Uh, I can listen to the theme song all day long. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm very excited to talk about the next one. So. Uh, oh, man. 
But I will say, too, the next one will be fun. I'm very looking forward to that. <laughs> Same here. Two weeks from now on the 17th, right? Two yep. weeks from now. Put Yay! that on my yep. calendar. Write my it calendar, down, man. Days, I'm just going to write Danny Phantom, so I'll know on my calendar. There you go. That's how you plan it out. Good job. Good job, man. <laughs> okay, well, until next time, I'm going ghost. Oh. I'm going ghost! <laughs> I'm gonna go intangible and fly out of here.